uh, dear friends well see uh, this is the for, for the delphi system this is the uh, base station where it has got a option of uh, to put around 16 uh, sensors but you know it's uh, expensive and uh, right now we have two sensors and these sensor were uh, donated by uh, the diluca organization diluca charitable organization in association with delphi incorporated uh, to me for a small project which i had uh, written and they have donated these two sensors and these are the latest sensors and these sensors do not have button on them because uh, uh, not having a button on them will increase their uh, durability because the button spoils and even this thing goes but here you have to on by remo removing it from the cradle over here and keep placing it in front of in the magnet here and now it's on this green and so this is also on the screen fine so these are the two sensors now what we have to do is first thing once the sensors are come out we have to um uh, sync this so i'll share the screen uh suman give me screen sharing uh you should be able to share sir no host disabled it's coming okay uh, sandeep can you okay got it yeah so now i'll be so now this is the trigno control utility to uh, pair the sensors okay now the trigno utility has started and it is pairing so since only two sensors it is already automatically paired first time when you pair it you have to do some kind of setting but now it, since we already use this it, is, it has automatically paired over here so the now the sensors are paired now once the sensors are paired we will open the uh, emg uh, file already we have uh, made a uh, template saved at emg template uh, file so i am going to open it now this first part of this uh, workshop is just to familiarize just tell you how you can do it okay you can't do it uh, hands on because you know to get certain settings you have to have the hardware here but since i am the, having the hardware i'm just uh, showing you to you how it is done as you have seen we have just uh, paired the sensors and now we are opening the lab chart well in this lab chart settings we have used this uh, camera so now we'll uh, start this camera over here so now you can see this video capture is there you can uh, do real time recording of the camera as well as the um, data acquisition so that you can know it which part of the movement uh, the particular signals have come so i'll take this video capture and uh, go for the settings and here i'll be doing v usb video device because i have attached my digital camera for this okay uh, sir uh, you just need to uh, switch off the the video from the zoom so that the oh, camera right. can be accessed from lab chat so that will come out of sharing no no Uh, you you can you can switch off the video from the zoom okay yeah i think if you can just restart the the lab chat once it will
So uh, yeah. since this is a yeah, a webinar. Uh, so this is a I mean hands-on uh, workshop. So I mean if you have any questions uh, in the middle, please uh, feel uh, free to. Uh, since it's a live workshop, uh, yeah. uh, there will be some lag time. Okay, interact. now now you can you have you can see that I have connected my camera to the laptop itself. So normally when you do the exercise also we can it can sync this uh, video with the exercise with the activity. So anyway. Okay, now we can see the base station. Now you can see these sensors. Now these sensors have got a sticker over here, which is a double-sided sticker, and these are specially made by uh, Delsys uh, system. They get along with the this thing. So what I will do is now I will show you how to attach the sensors. Now I remove the sticker over here, and uh, you know these these are the points. These are the contact points. So these have to come within these holes over here. And this is how you stick. Okay. Now this has it. Now this arrow shows you that uh, optimally you should uh, this arrow should align itself with the uh, fiber muscle fiber. That if muscle fiber is horizontal, you have to keep it horizontal. If it is a, a longitudinal, you have to keep it a longitudinal. And ideally, to get the other parameters, uh, this arrow should be pointing upwards. Now I'll remove this other side of the sticker. Okay, so once I've removed this sticker over here, I'll just place it on my biceps muscle. On my biceps muscle, normally you should place it in the middle of the belly of the biceps muscle, but there are instructions for that also. You can find it in the reference. You stick it firmly. Now I've stuck it firmly. Uh, there's one more. Now, now before uh, doing this, you should prepare the skin. Uh, normally, if you have any oily things on the skin and all with the simple uh, alcohol solution, you can just clean it up. But if you do not have very dense hair, it's okay. But in case you have dense hair, it might interfere with the signals. So what you do is uh, you can just shave off the hair or... But this is just a demonstration purpose and normal in this part, it's okay skin is dry enough and not uh... so the second one the second sensor second sensor i'll put it in my wrist uh, over here uh, i think it is uh, quadratus muscle okay fine now, since this is in the horizontal, uh, I mean, the diagonal position. Now, these two muscles I have attached, right? You can attach it to whichever muscles which you are uh, planning to investigate. And now, okay, now I think uh, Sumant will uh, take over the working. Now you can see this over here, the start button. This is the start the recording, just like any video recording, the start the recording. I think Sumant will explain it to other parts. Uh, Sumant, you can carry on. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. So uh, the idea is uh, just to give you a, a basic introduction on uh, how the setup looks like and uh, how the sensors looks like. And uh, we will have some live data. So what I do is I'll just click start recording here. So the moment we click start, uh, you should be able to see uh, live data coming in. Did I? Yeah, started. So I uh, hope you are able to see some uh, uh, data coming in. The sampling is happening, but since there are uh, uh, many channels say uh, roughly from each sensor there are about 10 signals coming in so we have a very narrow channel height so what i do is i'll just maximize the channel height by clicking and dragging from the divider so that i can visualize the uh, the first channel properly so let's have a look at the emg of one then we can uh, look into the others so immediate 
I mean, uh, action, once we get the signal, but we are not able to visualize properly. So the first action, what we should do is to scale up. So you can see there are icons which will help us to scale automatically. So this will help us to scale automatically once. And there is also an uh, automated uh, icon which will scale up continuously. So it is uh, better during the recording if you keep it checked. So that as the, the waveform changes, you can automatically uh, see the signal amplitude scaling up to the height of the window. So now uh, we are just monitoring the resting EMG. I mean, uh, sir has uh, uh, put the arm in the rest and uh, you can see some baseline activity is going on. So I can just use these tools or the icons to compress and expand the, the data. Like uh, the moment you take the cursor onto that particular icon, it shows what is the function of it. So it, it will be easy for us to uh, understand and uh, decide which one we need to. So what I'm doing is I'm just compressing so that I can see a larger time frame. So alternatively, you can also click on this, the ratio, say 200 is to one, and you can simply jump to whichever ratio if, if uh, desired. Uh, just so follow, now, one second, yeah. just follow the uh, request of person, just follow the uh, cursor, okay, where uh, Mr. Suman is taking the cursor and it is small. Uh, Suman, just tell them when you take the cursor, just tell them where it is, you know, bottom right screen or something like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, because so they mean, uh, maybe... by the time they go there, then <laughs> you'll be finished, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Uh, so, uh... So let's uh, do a small maybe muscle contraction and you can see an amplitude change and you can also see the video on the side. So you will, you will have a live feedback of the action and the response. Yeah. So I'll be doing the contraction now. Now I'm contracting down. Yeah, so maybe this is like uh, uh, two, three repetitions uh, uh, we have done. So you can appreciate the difference between the, the resting and the, the phase of contraction. So if you want to just uh, look into the, the other sensor data, I can just double click on this arrow when I take the cursor. So you can actually see the data of all the channels side by side. So if you want to uh, have a look at the, the EMG of both the sensors, I'm just increasing the width of only these two EMGs so that we can have a feedback of both. So depending on which muscle it is uh, placed on and uh, the way it is contracting, you can uh, see the changes in the amplitude. So scaling up is very important when we are uh, recording the data. Because uh, if say auto scale is not set properly, even if the data is coming in, probably we are uh, not in a view or uh, maybe we are not in a correct, uh, what do you call scaling so that we might not see the data correctly, say something like this. So the signal is coming, but we are not able to visualize properly. So this is one of the most frequent, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, issue we observe during the recording. So. Just by scaling up, it should resolve so that it will bring it to the screen. So we can also see the, the other parameters like not just the EMG with the each, each sensor, you can have roughly about uh, 10 signals. So I'll just take uh, maybe expand those channels so that uh, you will get an idea what exactly Hello. these channels and yeah. Hello. Uh, Suman? Yes, sir. Uh, one question is there. Where is the auto scale button? I am uh, not oh, yeah, sorry. Visualize it. Yeah, yeah. So you can uh, uh, see, sir, when you uh, take the cursor to the, the command section, are you able to see this commands portion here? No. Command menu. I'm just marking yeah, yeah. the red box. Yes, yes. So this first one, the green color icon is auto scale. Okay. And the second one is continuous auto scale. So, 
you can uh, i mean uh, take the cursor and just like uh, have a look in your uh, system also so that you can uh, you can the, also uh, suman you can also right click on the channel no over uh, here yes yes like that it. is that is another option say suppose if you right click on the graph itself uh, so you can auto scale that particular channel that is another way okay this way so let's uh, maybe increase the channel height uh one second sir let me increase the channel height so let's look at the accelerometer accelerometer data uh along with the emg say the channel 1 is the emg channel 2 is the x axis accelerometer channel 2 is y and channel 3 is z so just uh, adjusting the channel height so that you can see all three hope the screen is visible to all right so i'll just increase the compression ratio a little uh, sir can you move a uh, little slowly and uh, i mean okay. show us the uh, difference how this accelerometer can be useful or uh, how it can be uh, made use yeah sure so basically this accelerometer is nothing but uh, the uh, the kind of uh, movement how frequently we we accelerate from one position to the other so it can also be used in multiple uh, applications like uh, uh, to see the posture or to see the vibration or tremors something like that it can also be used for kind of uh, ergonomics and things like that so you see as sir is moving the arm up and down so you can see the one of the axes is actually showing the uh, the wave from going up and down hello subhan so, yeah uh, the accelerometer is inbuilt in the sensor provided by delsis yes it is it is part of uh, the sensors what you can see in the image in the okay. video so each sensor comes with uh, uh, almost like a nine degree of freedom signals that is uh, three of these accelerometers are also part of it so this can be useful for uh, some kind of uh, say movement analysis if you want to see whether the uh, there is a emg or not or there is a uh, maybe in some cases you might have observed there is no emg but there will be a tremor or only the kind of vibrations so you can pick up those vibrations from this accelerometer data also and in a, in a way you can also see it in a, in a way like a, a kind of a stability like uh, we have different views like uh, maybe i will i will cover that in a in a later stage in detail but just to give you an idea we have a xy view for example here are you able to see my uh mouse when i'm taking the xy view can be taken from this windows section and uh, you have different icons say first is chart second is uh, scope third is zoom and the fourth one is xy so you can also go from the window if you want to access click on the window and you can open the different views like chart scope and so on so i'll just show you what is the use of this xy view probably uh, it might be useful in some uh, applications so you can actually compare any any three channels in this case so you can see on the left it is actually showing that acceleration x so whenever the signal changes in amplitude so what it does is it will try to uh, create a kind of a uh, what do you call it? a graph and you can compare this with any other channel you can simply click in which channel you want to compare so we know that our second channel is x and third one is y suppose if you want to compare x and y i can simply click the third channel here so that will change to your acceleration y so now what we are doing is we are just comparing x and y so let me just uh, minimize this so that you can see the video the data and the the xy plotting so this can be used in a way like uh, uh, kind of a stability or a posturegraphy 
or if you want to see how much is the the movement compared to the previous position and uh, you can see the waveform going i mean moving from the center if there is no movement you can see the values will stay at a very small area or it will be like a, a pinpoint can be used some kind of stability or uh, maybe uh, sleep studies or movement studies different applications you can see so if you are moving in only one particular uh, orientation you can see the waveform positioning has changed from 0 g to maybe uh, negative side or the positive side sir can you move maybe in one angle slowly yeah see the waveform going in a particular fashion so this might be useful in many i mean applications if you want to see the repeatability whether the what do you call the movement is happening in the same what do you call angle or it is moving from the the initial uh, uh, what do you call movement so if he is able to just like move around in a circular fashion you can actually see the waveform is also moving in a circle and you can adjust the the settings like how much the the follow up it is something maybe you might have seen the the snake game so it looks <laughs> something similar so you can adjust the the persistence by dragging and adjusting the window from the top so now it is set to say 5 second persistence if it has to be very quick you can reduce so that only the very short following line of the persistence will be visible so you can compare with any any two signal say if we want to compare x and y x and z or pmg1 emg2 so any two you can easily compare so this is about uh, the xy so similarly we also have the other uh, two sensors so that is called as a magnetometer and a gyroscope that also works very similar to the accelerometer but in a way it is uh, kind of a uh, additional uh, feature some of the engineering people are trying to use it as a uh, what shall i say uh, maybe camera less uh, kinematic setup or a kind of a motion capture setup so but still it is under the uh, kind of a trial but there are the the raw data is always available in the lab chart so if you have some algorithm so you can always uh, make use of this data so any any questions on the recording or uh, the the raw data if not we can move to the analysis and we can see the other uh, aspects of the the data so maybe before we move on i will also show the the reading panel if you click and drag from this waveform you will actually see this uh, small box which is nothing but uh, the value panel we call it as a digital voltmeter panel dvm so this will give us the instantaneous uh, value as the data recording is going on so if you want to uh, see the previously recorded data or at a particular instance so uh, you can always stop the recording and the moment you take the cursor to a particular point it actually shows the value at that point so you see the moment i take the cursor to this p you can actually see the value at that point is reflecting there so it says 0.02 minus 0.02 millivolts so if required i can also zoom in and i can go to a much uh, uh, fine tuned or a expanded waveform so i can keep it in a continuous auto scale mode so i can see the waveform if at all there is a change i can always go for the peaks or uh, troughs see the moment i take the cursor to the peak it shows the value at this point is 0.03 millivolts and as i move the cursor it is instantaneously taking the the current value so this is just to have an observation of the uh the live data similarly the other channels will show in a different unit say like accelerometer will show in g's and the the gyro will show in degree per seconds and the magnetometer will show in micro teslas so 
if uh, there are no question uh, then we can move to the the example file uh, suman so you can also can... suman yeah you can also rename the channels no i mean suppose there are say five six sensors no you want to know which sensor yeah. is uh, which mask yes 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 definitely okay. so so if you want to uh, rename or edit the number of channels so you can click under the setup from the the menu and you can always go under channel settings the first option or you can also use a shortcut key control y so when you open this one so you will have a small pop up which will allow you to either rename the channel or increase or decrease the number of channels or uh, i mean you can also adjust the settings of those particular channels uh, i think there is some delay yeah i hope uh, you are able to see now now you see it is set to display roughly 20 channels here if you don't want all this 20 to be monitored so you're interested in maybe only two three channels you can simply type in the number of channels there if i say two only those two will be visible and you can easily rename this if it is say a particular muscle say uh, biceps i can rename it if uh, this is for a particular uh, location or a particular uh, uh, channel you can always rename it and uh, you can also see it is actually showing from which device it is taking and what is the sampling rate it is taking it so sampling rate i think many people uh, usually uh, get confused to what exactly should be the sampling rate and how do we decide and things like that but uh, you can you can actually refer to some of the journals so that is the best way and also there are many guidelines on what sampling rate should be used for what type of signals so emg is now set at around 2 2000 samples per second similarly the accelerometer is set at a lower sampling say 148 samples per second i think the second channel to the other emg second emg ha uh, we can yeah we can also set uh, uh, if you want the this emg to be here then we can go from the other window i will show you so you can also set the the range from here whether it is a uh, a uh, higher amplitude signal or a low signal so that you can set the precise amplitude or the scale up and the, the units color style and if at all any calculations so we will cover that in a while so if you want say only two channels for example you can also go and uh, select like custom so in this case you have to go for devices and channels where you will be able to easily mix and match in which channel which signal you want say for example you want only two emgs in the top i will just type two so that my display channels will be only two but which channels should be displayed that you can set by this drop down here first one can be my emg one and the second one i can click on the small arrow here so you can select in the second display which channel you want to monitor so i i'll select emg2 so now i have only two channels to view and it will be emg1 and emg2 say okay uh, let me check whether it is taken correctly yeah emg1 and emg2 say okay now instead of all this uh, 20 channels you should be able to see only uh, two channels with a equal pretty well height so there was a question uh, does the sensor cause any pain so this uh, this is a surface emg so as uh, sir has shown this has a kind of a, a flat contacts which doesn't cause any pain it is just like a metal just uh, place it on the the skin that's it it just like a something like a heart rate monitor or something which you just place it yeah you won't be able to you won't be knowing also but one important thing is that the sticking should be perfect uh, especially i have noticed when i have worked that uh, during this sweaty uh, situations you know when you are in a sweaty conditions uh, sometimes the sticker tends to come off then we do all kind of uh, exercise you know using other plasters to get it over the sensors and all so that one thing is important thing you have to ensure is that the sensor is stuck firmly to the uh, joint i mean if you're doing small yeah. actions is okay but if you're doing some running actions and all 
it becomes very important that i mean it's not uh, come off the skin so that one thing you have to be careful and uh, ideally if you do it in the ac conditions uh, because um, the sweating and all is less but i, I don't know, i think uh, maybe in foreign countries i mean us and they do only in ac conditions and all i don't know suman might be able to throw more, more light more, on that mostly uh, sir indoor so they won't have uh, the issue of sweating that much but of course in excessive uh, sweating area like you need to either have an additional support over the sensor or uh, you need to have some other alternative to i mean secure the sensor so there won't be inter- no there won't be interference in the signals and all if the sensor is covered from the top also right uh, not much of course there will be some uh, i mean it will be applying a little pressure on the sensor but it won't be having any other uh, I mean, uh, muscle artifacts apart from the little press maybe it will create a little discomfort so maybe uh, sir before we move on maybe i can uh, just show the spectrum you also want so that uh, we can see the live i think data. Have, i think you have to auto scale what is there all right yeah yeah they already auto scale uh yeah let me just go to the spectrum view ones so uh, the other thing which i was uh, talking about say uh, the chart view which we have seen in the previous uh, this window on the right what you see so this will help us to visualize the data in a kind of a strip chart recording which will show us the amplitude versus time but if we want to look at the frequency component of the the data so we have this view called spectrum view so we can decide like which channel we want to observe from the top drop down now it is set to uh, display the value of the first channel that is emg1 so if required you can select multiple or i mean all so you can also go for uh, the selected i mean a uh, selection or to the latest so let's see the latest one so that you can see some live data also and when you go to the settings which is on the top left which also allow you to set the parameters for the fft that is a fast fourier transform like the the bin width or the window width or the fft size and what type of uh, the window or data window you want to uh, select so these are some of the standard algorithms which are used in the fft so you can select whichever one is uh, most useful and the uh, windows overlap and uh, the modes so whether you want to monitor the power or the amplitude or the only the attenuation so usually we go for either power or the amplitude mode so once you set okay you can also set the color whether it has to be a, a red hsv red or yellow green depending on how it has to be displayed say suppose if i change it to yellow you can see the waveform which is displaying in the bottom will change it's just a visual uh, uh, change so uh, once you set this you can actually see the uh, the data coming in here maybe i will uh, maximize so there are two components again here so this will show the the fft in the complete spectrum where the frequency components are there so it is a kind of a two dimensional uh, signal whereas the second one which is a, a three dimensional signal or the graph which can give you an idea on the amplitude time and the frequency all three so let me just maximize this is uh, uh, spectrogram and we will go for some live data i'll start recording so you can see on the left you have the the frequency components say 0 200 400 600 and so on and the the horizontal axis is the time 14 14 14 10 14 and so on so let me start recording Uh, i think there is uh, some delay uh, sir i think uh, you need to just restart the uh, system once in some issue with the connectivity so meanwhile i will show the uh, the previously recorded waveform say for example if you just scroll it a little back it is already showing up some colors so you can see all these color shades this is nothing but the 
the value or the amplitude during the contraction. So I'll just maybe scroll or scroll to a particular area. So if I select a particular area, for example, maybe if I scroll back and uh, select an area of the contraction, you can actually see the uh, amplitude or the frequency signal or the frequency component of it in the spectrum view at the same time. So I'm just selecting it. You can see those selection also come in the, uh, the spectrum view. And you see the, the small color changes in the, the band of say roughly zero to 200 Hertz. So I can maximize if required. Are you able to see the color changes here? So whereas in this portion, which was a resting where you don't have those many frequency components, which is there in the contraction phase. So this is very clearly evident. So this gives you a rough idea. What is the frequency distribution of this particular contraction? That means at what, what frequency the, the, the muscles, I mean, or the, the fibers are firing. So it is spread across directly, maybe from 20 onwards, 20, 30 onwards, still almost up to 150, 200 on. Um, there might be many in the upper also, but the amplitude is much higher in the lower. So this gives you an idea on the, uh, the frequency so that you can it can be useful to put your filter also or uh, can be used to get an analysis band also so this is a good uh, tool hello sir uh, sumant one thing i would like to ask yeah uh, for this particular contraction we can visualize both amplitude as well as frequency isn't yeah. it yeah right, right that's what you are highlighted okay so for this particular contraction, can we calculate the mean frequency as well as uh, median frequency from the FFT that is fast? Yes, frequency? yes, we will we will go for a calculation from the the sample files sir, so that you can also see. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this we will just see how to I mean visualize the data, then we will uh, look into the calculations and extraction of the data also. Uh, sir, are you able to restart? Shall we? Just close and open once again so that we can record some live. Hello, Suman. Yes, sir. Uh, there is one question. When you start the spectra view and then switch over to the FFT analysis, there was uh, one uh, parameter uh, you choose that is sampling for FFT was 1K per second. Yeah. So it is by default or we according to the acquisition, EMG acquisition parameter, we have to choose the same one? Uh, in the analysis, it will be different. Say, suppose uh, if you have a hardware which is capable of sampling at say 5000 hertz or 5 kilohertz. In that case, uh, uh, what happens is you can put a, what do you call, bin width up to 5000 hertz. So that makes sense because you have already collected the data. Yes. But for the analysis, you can undersample or oversample. Both options are there. So if you are, uh, I mean, setting a, a parameter only for the analysis, so you can play around with the settings. Either you can go for a undersampling, like maybe 128 hertz. Or you can go for oversampling for maybe 4000 uh, hertz, even though you have recorded at 1000 uh, hertz sampling rate. Okay. okay. So it, it only allows you to uh, take those many samples for the averaging or to calculate the frequency component of it. Yes. So uh, let me just open the. Uh, just excuse me for some background noise from my side. So let me open the spectrum view once again. So we'll be uh, just looking at maybe one channel so that we can uh, get an idea. As the recording goes on, so you can uh, see how the... I'll just move this camera thing. Right. So we can also go for say window and tile. So it will allow us to uh, make equal size tile so that we can see all three together. So, 
so just we will start the recording and meanwhile we can also set uh, the values so as i was telling the sampling rate is set to 2000 in this case of for the recording but for the analysis of the fft we can either go for under sampling like 32 64 and so on or we can go for over sampling like 4k 8k and so on so 1k is set default we can i mean go ahead and change it uh, as in when required so i'll go for maybe amplitude mode this time say the moment we start recording so you can see the live data we can uh, get an idea on the uh, the amplitude from the raw data which is there in the channel 1 start recording sir any any issue on the connection uh you might have to close the trigno also once yeah so you need to uh, just uh, i mean as we start the trigno utility and then uh, power on so that it should uh, work fine so i request all the i mean uh, attendees to just open the any one of the file either the the sample 1 or sample 2 so that uh, you just have the data in front of you so we will start uh, uh, doing some activities from the the lab chart reader so once we have a look at the the live spectrum view then we will move on to the uh, the reader part so i'll just open the spectrum view again tile it and uh, start recording so since we are looking at only the first channel so i'm just uh, dragging the the values for and maybe the mode of flow amplitude so rest i will keep as it is and start recording so now you see as the data starts coming we'll just keep it uh, scaled so you can see there is some uh, data coming in now already which is of some uh, random frequency we don't know exactly how much is uh, uh, the signal component of it because it looks very similar so and it looks all red so you can also use this uh, auto scale options here on the uh, the top auto scale similarly the scaling from the bottom so for the baseline itself you see this has this much frequency component so from 0 onwards it's going up to say roughly about 600 to 650 hertz rest looks very flat close to zero so that means the, the baseline itself is fluctuating from here to here now uh, sir can you try one contraction and see yeah so now you see the moment sir is contracting you see the 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 way the amplitude or the power is raising in the view here are you able to see the live data so you can see a lot of difference in the amplitude compared to the, the resting stage even though the amplitude or sorry the the frequencies of the same range say it's almost from 0 to 650 hertz it is not changing much in the frequency band but there is a lot of difference in the amplitude or the power 
the same thing should reflect here also just let me uh, scale it on the, the spectrum view here maybe if required i can maximize a little so that uh, so oh so battery is running low so we'll we'll we'll, we'll finish quickly maybe 2 minutes so i'm just compressing this one so that you can uh, see a larger data point and i'm just scaling this on the right also so that you can appreciate the the difference in the color just start to scale here now you see a very clear band from whatever is the the display it was showing say 0 to somewhere around 400 600 you see the moment it sir is contracting you see this yellow patches very clearly that means that has a strongest uh, amplitude of all those frequency components whatever is the blue background that shows that the the less amplitude so this gives you an idea what is the the rough band of the frequencies and since this is a real time maybe if required you can always i mean uh, fine tune the protocols or maybe you can uh, use it for some uh, uh, therapeutic uses also so any any questions on the the light then we will move to the uh, the sample i hope this this is some I mean, clear and uh, you can uh, some the question is there calculate the average of peaks of muscle contraction if you can show over here uh ca calculation sorry how to calculate, calculate the, the average, average of peaks, of peaks. Of average of peaks of muscle contraction yes sure we will we will go for the calculation in the sample file so so uh, sir i'm just uh, i mean uh, sharing my screen so that uh, we will open that uh, uh, one of the file and we can start analyzing the data one by one so stop the recording So let uh, me share. Like, so I'll exit from this. Yes, sir. Please, yeah. Okay. You can stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. So let me open the the lab chart reader. Oh no, I didn't. I thought it. Move it, move it. So you can you can also open lab chart reader in your respective uh, I mean uh, systems so that uh, you can uh, follow real time what is happening. so i hope you are able to see the screen idha ki literally hardware beka da still adakke cut 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 aguru refresh rate kadime irbeku so are you able to see my screen adu tegidu hala close ma beda beda so yes let me let me open one file so that is uh, uh maybe since we have selected two i'll take one of this say squat emg data so this is the same lab chart reader so lab chart reader will allow you to uh, manage the data like if it is recorded uh, from the power lab you can open the data you can also open some uh, okay, okay. text data if required if you want to just analyze Uh, or if you want to share with somebody who doesn't has a lab chart uh, license software so this will allow you to open and uh, uh, visualize the data and you can also do some basic analysis so let me open the the sample file so this is what uh, is the example data so which also has some comments you can see start squat start and start and so on so we will we will have a look at maybe no, channel data for example so as we have seen last time you can also see the amplitude when you take the cursor to a particular point so as as it is uh, moving up and down you can see the value changing randomly as you move the cursor but the challenge when we go for the emg data uh, so many people ask whether we can take an average of this emg signal 
of course we can take an average but the problem what happens is uh, the signal is unidirectional or uh, uh, both directional in nature or you can say bidirectional so the 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 magnitude of uh, the positive amplitude and magnitude of negative amplitude will be almost equal in the eng signal so what happens the moment you take an average so it becomes close to zero so uh, i mean that means that zero is nothing for us because we want to get some value or uh, some change before and after so averaging is not a good idea so let's see what all the options we have in the lab chart to analyze the data so first if you want to extract the value as you said uh, maybe averaging yes of course it is possible so we can use maybe some of the channels for the analysis so sir has uh, already named it as uh, different muscle names so if required we can also add more channels i can right click and say add a channel if we want to create some calculation i will just click on the the seventh channel drop down to get some calculation out of this particular signal so if you want to take the uh, averaging or any of the calculation a uh, simple calculation will be the integral so what we do is like we add up all those frequency components or the uh, the amplitude we have collected for so much time or maybe a fixed time or uh, uh, the continuous so to set the integral we can click on this integral option so where you have a small pop up window which will help you to select from which signal you want to integrate say channel 1 for example from this first channel we can integrate and there are types of integral whether it has to be absolute value positive only negative only or the standard so we can go for absolute value so that the whatever the millivolt value can be um, retained and the question comes for the reset so reset means the the integral starts from zero when you have to set it back to zero that means the cycle completes whether you don't want any resetting that means continuously or time reset by cycle or a constant decay or by event so let me show you with the no reset just say okay other things can be a default say okay so now you see it has actually given a kind of a line graph or uh, maybe you can say a continuously increasing waveform so what this does if i just maximize this channel width or something like that so you can see in the initial phase this point it is exactly zero i just bring in this value panel you see this point the first point before any sample starts it will be zero then what it does is each and every component of this frequency it keeps on adding in this particular channel that is a seventh channel so it says the unit is millivolt second so this is basically the integral of all the component of this so that is why you see the when there is a baseline the increase in the integral is also very uniform very steadily it is increasing because the frequency components are almost similar but you observe from the time where it it gets some contraction you see there is a change in the the portion of the the slope here because there is much more amplitude and the uh, the spikes are coming so the the rate of addition is also going higher here so this is one way of getting an amplitude converted into a, a meaningful units or say a integral so how we can extract is maybe you can say before and after so if you know that uh, this is the start of the contraction for example you can take before how much was the amplitude or the the integral and at the end of the contraction how much was the amplitude maybe somewhere here so you can simply take the differential by using the marker you can click on drag from the bottom left just place wherever you want to take the differential from and just dropping it here and i'm keeping the cursor on the end of the contraction either it can be here or here whichever you decide now it shows the delta 0.11 millivolt second that is the difference in the integral of uh, the first contraction so this can be one way 
which which can give you a better uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the differentiation compared to your resting value and the uh, the contraction phase. The same way, if you do this for maybe about uh, even two three seconds or four seconds, you get hardly say minus point zero two millivolt second. It's a very very less or point zero one millivolt second. Very less value. But the same way, if you just take for the the contraction phase. You get say point one one, almost ten times higher. So that gives Hello. you much clear. Yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, Suman, there is one question. Yeah. Uh, suppose we want to know the mean amplitude uh, yeah. after say three trials of um, um, isotonic biceps contraction, isn't it? Okay. So okay. we will be using this integral function. Okay, uh -huh. and uh, the delta um, integral function value at the end of uh, three trials can be taken okay. as an average. Yes, you can. You can. So what you can do is like if you know that uh, this is your, uh, uh, I mean, delta contraction of first set, for example. Yes. And you got value of maybe say point eleven millivolts. Just to, uh, we are not uh, taking the value yet. We're just comparing visually. Say so this contraction, for example, gave us around 0.12 millivolt second. Same way, if you want to just replicate the same for the second one, and just dropping on the the second set of contraction here, and the delta T is say 0.08 millivolt second. Okay. Whereas previous one was 0.11 or 0.12. This is much lower. Visually, also we can appreciate. So this is much larger spikes compared yes. to this one. Yes, yes. But we need to make sure that the time of the contraction remains same in both the contractions. Yeah. Because say if you select uh, say maybe three second integral of the first one, and if you take only the two second integral of the second one, then it is not a apple to apple comparison. Okay. So the the more time, the chances of getting more integral is. Uh, Always there, so that you need to be careful. So similarly, if you want to take the third one also, just to see, just dropping this marker onto the set of maybe contraction here, here, and the end that is coming say point zero seven. So first one is much stronger than the rest, point eight something, point zero seven this one. So of course we can also take this into a data pad. We will see that. So this is one way, as I said, the uh, as a integral. So what are the other ways? So we can always go for adding multiple calculations. So let me take one more channel and just name it as an integral, for example. Integral. I mean, since you you have the file, uh, I would request all of you to just uh, maybe add a channel and try to uh, maybe derive a parameter to to get an integral, so that you will feel comfortable on the settings. The next one I would go for. From the same raw data, let's try a slightly different calculation. So this time, we can go for arithmetic. So one of the common analysis done on the EMG is called as RMS. I think most of you are uh, uh, probably aware of the RMS. So, so you can see the EMG will have both positive as well as negative amplitude. But the graph we found should look only in the positive, so that we can compare before it was uh, maybe close to zero. Afterwards, it has increased or decreased. So to get this, so we need to use this formula called RMS. So what it does is it will try to square both the uh, the I mean positive and negative, so that negative will be squared and it will come as positive. Then we will take a mean and we will integrate. Them. So how to add the formula is very simple. Just type in RMS into this uh, uh, formula box. Just open the bracket, and you need to mention from which channel you want to get the RMS from. You can also select from this dropdown. So that will be my first channel, for example. So that is says channel one. So you need to add a little window, so uh, to get an average of the RMS. So what we do is we just put a comma. And we mention the window width in seconds. Usually it will be point two to point three. So the moment you you click on point two or you type in point two, you see the the average or a kind of a a preview of the waveform here. 
just observe the the time here say 2 second 3 second 4 second and so on similarly it's here 1 2 3 4 and 5 for the first pass what you call contraction you got the rms of the waveform something like this this is with 0.2 second of average interval now why you have to set 0.2 that that is again a, a topic of uh, uh, kind of a uh, debate because there are many papers uh, who have mentioned using a different uh, window width but you can use like 0.2 to 0.3 is mostly uh, used say for example if i use a little higher or lower uh, window width just observe 0.3 so signal looks more or less similar but what happens is it will become more smoother and the other side if i put a very low window you see the signal looks more or less a spiky i put a very low uh, window with say 0.01 so you can um, observe the waveform difference when you put a higher window width and the lower window width. say 0.5 even a smallest uh, uh, spikes or the the fringes also it is chopping off so it is making it more soft so somewhere 0.2 to 0.3 is uh, considered as uh, i mean a good one so that you can get a nice waveform also at the same time you will have a considerable amount of frequencies also in the uh, in the signal then Hello. if required you can convert into a different unit by default it shows volts 0.15 volts so you can convert this into a millivolt if it's already uh, not there then you can say define unit just select millivolt milli in volts so it will convert it into millivolt say 100 150 so i think this will be actually if you go into the microvolt so depending on what exactly is your uh, unit so you can convert so micro okay we can convert it to microvolts okay now you can appreciate uh, the the much better waveform compared to your raw data now you can at least have some confidence in saying that during the the what do you call the resting and during the contraction you can see some difference in amplitude and you can easily now compare the first and second set of contractions so visually is fine but you can also see the the waveform and the the peaks are also raising the second third fourth and so on so this is another way of uh, uh, what do you call getting the analysis done from the uh, the raw emg data so what we have done is a rms now if you compare this with your previous that is another what do you call aspect where we are taking the complete whereas here we are putting a window width of maybe 0.2 0.2 and then we are averaging those uh, uh, values so this is the second way of uh, what do you call analyzing the data any questions on the rms suman yeah hello yes yes please sir uh, are this thing uh, integral now you reset the intervals of uh, this comments see how it will come uh you mean integral to say setting uh, that's what uh, interval settings i mean between intervals between the comments between. no between the comments sir it will be a little that option is there uh, you can set but you need to have a custom event marker or else you, know, you can do is if your timing is fixed you can go for reset by time uh, okay there is no comment as such there is no comment okay so uh, what you can do is uh, uh, the the instead of resetting so that's why what i showed you is a continuous Okay, then see the gap interval. Just see the difference from whichever point two points you want to see the difference from, so that you will not miss out any data in this. Or else, uh, if you want to go for a particular time, maybe I will show you with a time reset of maybe, say roughly this is taken maybe around uh, five seconds each. Let's say five second, it will reset. So it looks something like this. so first 5 second it will keep on integrating then second 5 second set again third and so on but this might overlap with your contraction and the resting phase so instead you can have a continuous uh, equal integral so that you can just take the difference so that is uh, much easier and convenient option so this is uh, one way 
are you are you able to do the same in your systems also if you have any difficulties uh, let me know i think some are not uh, uh, unmuted just unmute some of them uh yeah the dog is just a second yeah Maybe if uh, anybody has any questions, just unmute yes. and. Uh, uh, yes, Suman, yes, I have sir. a question. Please, sir. Uh, um, for calculating RMS, this much yeah. exercise is sufficient. But uh, how to know that uh, uh, the amplitude obtained is standardized one? Because uh, for um, uh, standardization, what we do, we ask the mm -hmm. subject to. Undergo um, contraction, maximal contraction, and then we compare <laughs> it with the right. uh, baseline. So, how to work with that? Yes, so that is a very, I mean, uh, valid, and this is a most commonly faced challenge. So, how do we uh, standardize this signal? So, that is a tricky part. So, uh, maybe uh, Gerard sir, would you like to? Uh, explain something because uh, he, he had a similar no, actually, issue and we have actually, like you said even i am a bit confused because even i have read a lot of references they say <laughs> maximal voluntary contractions uh, yes. you know isometric contractions yeah. and there are a lot of references uh, giving the exact the movements what you have to do in which position uh, for me, each muscle in which position you have to do the uh, yeah. mvic yeah. but there are a lot of people also have asked questions like uh, mm -hmm. The maximum voluntary contraction amplitude, you know, the value, sometimes is much lower than what you actually get while you're doing it. <laughs> like for example, I have, I have done squats using body weight exercise, whereas I have taken MVIC, you know, uh, working, uh, trying the knee extension against the resistance. But uh, mm -hmm. this thing comes above a hundred percent. When actually when you do the squats, it comes much more than your MVIC. So still it is a uh, confused. So what I did was uh, like, I asked with the Suman then uh, what I did was I took the MVIC of that particular uh, interval. And that is uh, um, say not the exact, the peak of the MVIC, but uh, the average of the MVIC. Otherwise I took the, the whole RMS, the peak of the RMS, I compared it with that. So that is just an experimentation but not actually for a paper and all things. So even I am in the course of that experimentation only, we require more light on that actually. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, like once you get the raw data, I think uh, you can do within itself, uh, you know, um, but uh, the isotonic, you do this maximum uh, rep, I think that is the best thing, but uh, how much it is possible to do an actual experiment or uh, uh, this thing, uh, research is uh, very difficult. We require to have subjects yeah. to do those They're available at different times. Very, very, very true, sir. Because the, the challenge here is the EMG can be based on the isotonic movement or isometric movement or iso isometric contraction. So if you are able to reproduce uh, based on the same set of action, then probably your uh, uh, amplitudes might be comparable. Otherwise, even though you are doing the same exercise, it might have a different amplitude. And but, isometrics, uh, some people might yeah. be able to, you know, um, what is it, activate their muscles much more than uh, the others during during MV, MV, I say, isometric uh, maximal contraction. Uh, yeah, so when they're doing the squats using body weight exercise, all will be using their relative strength. But when they do actually exactly. MV, uh, maximum contraction, some might be able to uh, activate much more than the uh, other people. So even there, there might be that difference between individuals. Yes, so sir. Yes, yes. exactly. Yes, sir. Exactly, sir. And there is yes. inter-individual difference. And to standardize it, uh, when we are doing any research study on an N number of samples, we need RMS. We take RMS uh, as a tool for standardization. So as yeah, to avoid yeah. the differences in the amplitude encountered in different subjects. So that's why uh, in many papers they have recommended that uh, you should standardize it against the MVIC, that is maximum yeah. voluntary contraction. Uh, yeah. For that so, particular. Sir, uh, yes. Maybe what I what I can say, uh, I mean, even though there are a lot of uh, variations among the contractions itself within, 
so but like you can decide whether you want to have a separate uh, a contraction for the mvc or use one of the maximum out of your contraction as a mvc are you are you getting my point say for example we have say 10 set of repetitions for example during the recording so you can use one of this contraction which are which has come maximum as a mvc for example the first one because yeah. if you see the amplitude the first one the subject has achieved the maximum contraction in in terms of the rms yes or you can have a separate set of contraction as a mvc but as uh, dr gerald said that uh, the the initial one might be the lowest <laughs> compared to the rest in times yeah yeah it may be so, the case it may be the case so unless uh, unless uh, you have given any load if uh, unless the action is against any load you won't expect uh, any mvc yeah, exactly that, i have uh, a different uh, this one and there might be a warm up issue also probably yes in the initial yes. probably Uh, uh, maybe the the uh, it's a warm up time probably the muscle might not have contracted to the maximum yes. so a as in the uh, case we observed that uh, even the delta integral emg tends to decrease okay. with uh, three successive contractions okay so uh, this has to be there initially initially it has to be there because see uh, there may be there may be some changes in the muscle which reflects uh, uh, under performance over the successive contractions isn't it Yeah, and meanwhile yeah. when we record any type of isometric contraction for standardization we advise mm -hmm. a rest period as such as such yeah. we advise the rest True. period in between uh, two successive contractions yes True. True. so uh, i mean uh, uh, irrespective of the the what do you call the challenges sir what we will do is like we will see how we can actually get the mvc out of this rms so it can be either applied to one of the uh, uh, trials or to the separate one so what we do is like now the rms is actually showing in the absolute value so it is millivolts so we will just choose one of this waveform we think this is a mvc so what we need to do is we need to consider the baseline as zero and the peak as 100% so that we we are kind of calibrating for that particular set so it is very simple you just select that particular uh, uh, Yeah, Suman, so why don't you spend a couple of minutes tell the other uh, attendees also about uh, throw more light on MBIC because uh, yeah, some yeah. We, so sir, what what we can do is like we will just show them how to uh, uh, calibrate. Maybe they can also try uh, in their respective systems. Okay. So we we will just select for one set of uh, uh, waveform. Maybe it should have a peak and the the flat portion that is a baseline. so we will just click on the same channel drop down so the there is a line below these are all calculations and the above one you can set this is a units conversion so the third option so we will click on this so you can see whatever we have selected has appeared here so we are assuming the baseline i'm just selecting some area so that it takes the average of this baseline we consider this as 0.1 when i click on this arrow it should take the amplitude at that particular level and i consider this as zero percentage and i will click on the the peak precisely on the the, the peak of this uh, particular mvc and i'm clicking on the arrow so that it gets the value of the voltage you see this is about uh, 14860 microvolts and uh, the second one is 20 uh, sorry around 2 lakh uh, something microvolts so there is a lot of difference and i am considering this one as my maximum or say 100% from the unit i can convert into a percentage is it uh, clear to everyone maybe just try with the second waveform maybe if you want to just consider that as uh, the mvc but you need to be uh, i mean uh, uh, careful that if your mvc is set to 100% chances that it will show more than 100% and mvc practically it should not be the case but it really depends on what is the maximum value you have taken for the mvc 
Now, when I click OK, you just observe the scale here on the the left. It will convert into a percentage. Is it clear? So the first contraction we have calibrated as zero to hundred. So with respect to the first contraction, now if you take the cursor to the peak of second, it says sixty nine percent. The third one, if you take the cursor, it says somewhere around the eighty nine percent, and so on. So this is a, a way where we can have some comparison among the contractions, even though. We we don't have the exact uh, what do you call it uh, the the time difference between the each and the waveforms are also not exactly the same because some of them are very low in amplitude, some of them are in high. But we can have a a same kind of a unit to have comparison among the peaks. So maybe just try on your uh, uh, systems. Just select some area. If you have already calculated the RMS. Select some area, and you can uh, have the uh, the units conversion applied. Now the question comes: Why not we apply the units conversion onto the raw data here? So this would become very difficult, and sometimes it might be an error also, because uh, this will have some of the uh, very very high frequency spikes. So that might occur for a particular instance only, which might not be there in any of the recordings. So, if we consider this as a uh, maybe hundred percent, probably we might uh, end up losing the data or uh, what do you call expressing in a different terms. So, it makes more sense to have the RMS over the I mean, uh, percentage or uh, the MBC calculated on the RMS rather than the raw data. Are you are you following? Need any more clarification or any further questions? Hello, uh, sir. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, sir. Actually, uh, after uh, uh, unit conversion, so uh, we are having the peaks. So, can we calculate the uh, average of the peaks of these muscle contraction? Yes. Yes, you can. You can. So you mean to say you want to have an average of first, second, third, and so on, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Like that. Yes, we can. So we will. Uh, we will look into that now. So now uh, we were doing all this uh, channel calculation. We were not extracting any data so far. So now we yes, want sir. to extract the data. So what we will do is we have a data pad view. Are you able to see from the uh, the section which is here data pad view? Yes, sir. I can see. I can see the data pad. So what we will do is we will open this uh, first icon that is a data pad view. Data pad view. So which will allow us to uh, visualize the data in numerical form. Mm -hmm. Let me just tile it so that we can see both side by side. Okay. Now when we have this uh, value panel, so it becomes easy. Just you need mm -hmm. to select which portion you want to take the data. Say for example. You want to uh, have an average of a particular RMS, for example. Mm -hmm. The moment you select this portion, it is automatically giving the mean of all those channels for this selection. Okay. There might be say ten channels or fifteen channels, any number of channels. The moment mm -hmm. you select that por portion, mm -hmm. it automatically updates the value of the respective channels in this selection. Mm -hmm. So uh, now the question comes: So how we can uh, uh, what compare with the others? Mm. So one thing is you can manually add them to data pad. Like you said, okay. this is your first set. You can mm. uh, click on the second option: Add to data pad. Add to data pad. So this will add the mean value of this selection to data pad. Uh, not just mean; you can also take the maximum. Say, for example, we have ah. calculated the. Sir, actually, uh, we need the maximum of maximum this value. RMS contraction. So you can set the uh, the columns of all uh, these. It is a column eight. Uh, eight. Uh, what I can do is, uh, since we don't need this raw data for anything. Yeah, exactly. We we don't need it. So I'll just click on this column A, mm -hmm. and I can set what exactly I want from this. Uh, I want the maximum value, for example. Maximum. 
uh, yeah maximum and value i want this maximum value from my RSS from channel number 8 8 so i simply select so that my column a will be the rms maximum okay if if i need one more i can simply click on the next column setup so it will go to column b setup the second one okay okay so this way i can set any number of parameters or any kind of combination mm -hmm. say if i want to see the the maximum value from say maybe integral also for example mm -hmm. statistics maximum value from my seventh channel that is integral okay say okay similarly you can have multiple uh, maybe i'll just uh, go back and uh, say no reset no no reset so that i will get if i say this selection till here mm -hmm. whatever is the integral value will be already added as a maximum value you might have observed here so minus 0.1404 that is a, a point at this okay so depending on where we have placed the uh, this one integral maximum so automatically it will adding Uh, so similarly Suman, now yeah in the third column do the this thing uh, maximum minus minimum so you can get the uh, integral you can get the maximum uh, difference in the interval no yes yes it will come statistics maximum to minimum integral so this will be exactly same as uh, your uh, uh, this one the total value so from mm -hmm. integral channel okay, okay. now you see if you want uh, i'll just delete the previous data and i can select some portion which i want to take the value uh, if you have already added a comment we can also select between the comments start to start or start to end and just select and add start to data mm -hmm. you can also use shortcut control d so that it will add up mm -hmm. so this is my first set of contraction similarly i can select the second one again add to data pad third one okay. and so on okay so this now will allow me to have some comparison you can now see say percentage maximum was 100% for the first mm -hmm. second was 70 third was 90 okay so once you have this settings file made so you can uh, we, we view the data in different angles mm -hmm. since there is nothing like very fixed or uh, like say you calculate the heart rate and take the before and after no, nothing like that nothing very rigid for the emg so mm -hmm. since we are exploring what is the best way of uh, what we call expressing so the the multiple angles of analysis will definitely help to see if there is any significant difference so now if you want to have an average of this then this is any i mean uh, very similar to any of your excel sheet or a spreadsheet oh. just uh, have a average of this much in one of the columns just put a formula here equals average of uh, whatever uh, say uh, where do you get it from the logical statistical or mathematical statistical just take yeah, the average number list average. or if you want to put even some custom calculation you can use those uh, uh, tools here just average and say number list say i want leave from these three and then we put the end so okay. this is the average of only these three so if if you want to have a plotting also you can always use this plotting say for example i want to have a plotting of uh, uh, maximum rms percentage and the integral maximum value i am selecting these two uh, columns and maybe six rows mm -hmm. um, so the three rows right click and create a plot so it will be very similar to your excel you can select line bar whatever graph you want say line graph for example or bar graph say okay so it shows the comparison of both the uh, values whereas the the first series will be your uh, column a that is the percentage maximum and bc and the second one will be your uh, the maximum rm or integral value so if required you can also have a separate plotting also so that you can have a comparison of one to one so would you would you like to add anything uh, sir since you have no, uh, this is good sir uh, do we have a wavelet as well in this 
Uh, yes, that is a, I mean, good question, and many people usually ask uh, for the wavelengths. So, uh -huh. one option, what I can say is, uh, there is no direct wavelength analysis from the spectrum view. Like as we have seen the the spectrum value, which is showing the complete band here. Uh -huh. But yes, we can still analyze the the wavelengths. So the options what we have is, if you want to split, say. Okay. Now we know that uh, this particular channel has a uh, frequency of maybe zero to six hundred hertz, roughly. Mm -hmm. So what wavelet means is we want to analyze the different uh, what we call uh, frequency bands. We will right. split them from say zero to three hundred and three hundred to six hundred band, for example. Mm -hmm. And maybe then we subdivide it to maybe zero to one fifty and one fifty to uh, three hundred, or zero to four fifty or zero to seventy five. So we just want mm -hmm. to observe how the, the frequencies or the amplitude change at different different wavelengths. Yeah. So in that case, so there are two options. Either you can go by the uh, the data pad, or you can go by the raw data. So if you want to go by the data pad, you can simply click on one of the channel column. Okay. So there is an option called spectrum here. Spectrum. So uh, and some of you were also asking uh, how to get the median frequency from the waveform. So for those calculations also, we can simply select the spectrum from the data pad and select your desired uh, uh, component or the analysis parameter, say maximum power or the power median power frequency, for example, from your raw data that is your N2. So what it does is it will try to calculate the the mean median power frequency from the the first channel, and it will display the the value in the third column here, the C. Say okay, and you see it is directly showing the median power frequency of this particular selection, sixty eight point okay. three hertz. Uh -huh. Now if I select a different portion, the frequency changes. Now you see it is eighty one. Observe the first row. Okay. And if you just select only the baseline, you see it is only 24 hertz. It is 24. So this is only the median power frequency. And we have not specified the frequency band in this. Whatever it has, it will show take the median and update. Now if you want to split into a different wavelengths. So what we can do is, I'm just adding one more channel. I'll go to okay. the channel drop-down. Same way I have done the arithmetic and all, I will go to digital filter here. So now we know that uh, the total frequency is 0 to 600. We want to extract a wavelet which is maybe uh, 150 to 300 band for example. Let me set from channel 1. I will put a band pass filter. Band pass, okay. So what I am telling is, I am telling the software to cut off the rest and allow only between say uh, 75 hertz to 75 to 200 uh, 120 so this is for one band similarly uh -huh. you can have multiple bands okay so now let's see how the signal looks like so i'm just putting the band pass filter mm -hmm. now in this channel it is only showing the 75 to 150 component of your raw data okay so similarly if you want a different wavelet you can add on multiple channels. Now this is a uh, 75 to 150. I can rename this 75 to 150. And okay. in the the tenth one, I will set another digital filter for a different band from first channel. Band pass. Uh, maybe I will. Uh, I want to observe say 150 to. Uh, for example, or maybe we'll see a lower one, say 10 hertz to 75, for example, or 10 to 35 hertz, for example. Uh, the, the sampling rate says exceeds uh, because you need to have at least some frequency components in that uh, particular band so that you can get the uh, uh, view. And I have put it reverse, so the higher cutoff. Yeah, so it is reverse. Lower than the the lower one, say 35 to... Now we can give it a 10. So now you can see for the same channel, same raw data, even if you count manually also, 
see i'm just expanding the signal so this is our raw data that is the first channel and this is 75 to 150 and this is uh, 10 to 35 so this is another wavelet we are looking at now this particular has only the frequency component which are higher higher in frequency which are not there in this one you see this particular frequency component this one this probably we don't know at what frequency because it is not there in both of them only some amplitude is here are you yes. are you able to follow me yes 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 sir but you see this small one which has picked up in this band but which is not there mm. in this one so this yes, way right, right. you can set different wavelet bands and then if you want to analyze the data you can you can get the value of uh, uh, those whatever you want to extract instead of taking the uh, say a spectrum maybe a median power frequency or whatever from this waveform you can take so that it will be limited to that band mm -hmm. for example the median power frequency from your 10 mm -hmm. to 35 okay so that means only you are limiting your uh, this one to wavelet between within 10 to 35 hertz only 10 to 35 so then you can get a, a more fine tuned whether this because this, this was shown the raw data uh -huh. so if i select the uh, the area the mean will be shown in both but the band will be different okay so sir uh, which one is the right frequency to choose to work on this emg uh so that is a difficult question uh -huh. because uh, the frequencies are not same for each contraction and each person uh -huh, right so it would be very difficult to say because say and i think even like if the muscle is going to uh, what do you call uh, get fatigue then also frequency might be shifted so uh -huh. it would be uh, very difficult to take only from the frequency angle but it would be better if you take it as a whole that okay. means just go go by time domain and take uh -huh. all the frequencies okay it or uh, take the rms so that you will get all the amplitude component so i think uh -huh. both ways uh, will give you uh, maybe some uh, good uh, uh, data points okay uh, suppose uh, we are doing some is quartz exercise so and uh, we are placing our electrodes on lower limbs so which one will be good 75 to 150 or uh, something different no you you need to go more probably because uh, as per some of the articles so uh, mm. even though the data is very high in uh, 75 to around 250 range then okay. uh, we have also observed if you see the the spectrum view of the data the moment mm. i select this and uh, observe you see the maximum frequency component is somewhere up to say 600 here during the contraction okay right 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 can you see this yes sir yes sir i can But see you you see the color color code maybe if i have <laughs> just uh, uh, change the view the maximum uh -huh. amplitude is up to say in between uh, to... 10 to 200 or something like that uh -huh, right 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 but amplitude is further high amplitude is going beyond 600, 600. right but the maximum amplitude is below 200 only below 200 right so uh, like now if you are taking only 0 to 200 or 75 to 150 you will miss the components which is above 200 okay so that challenge challenge is always there mm -hmm. so it it is always better maybe uh, you you can either take a whole like you take from 0 to say 800 hertz and take whatever components Okay. Or you you uh, maybe uh, subdivide zero to one fifty, one fifty to three hundred, three hundred to four hundred, and so on. And later on, you can add them up again together if required. Add them up, or we have to do average. Average is also better, but uh, average again might bring you to the same level, the initial zero. Okay. Because, because you are you are not averaging into the same class, which you can compare. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Different segments. so uh -huh. it, it is a little tricky because now if you compare or average 0 to 200 and 200 to 400 probably uh -huh. you might get nothing 
okay so if you want to compare better to compare 0 to 200 of all the the squads mm -hmm. so but again i mean i'm not saying that this is the only way so but these mm -hmm. are the tools available so which will help you to get a lot of uh, what do you call uh, the statistics then you will be able to compare okay whether this is good or that is good which one is more uh, useful So the the wavelengths now say suppose if you see I have set a filter of thirty five to ten to thirty five say uh -huh. ten channel. You see the waveform how it looks. It will only yeah, show the value is. which is <laughs> up to say thirty five hertz and it is cut off. After forty you hardly have any frequency here. See it's completely uh -huh. right. Right. It's showing only this frequency components. So similarly, right. if you now change it to the seventy-five to one, that two. is again the same band. Okay, right. So you will not have anything below seventy-five, nothing above one hundred. Above one hundred, right, right, right. So this will allow you to have a differentiation of different bands and see whether amplitude is more in that band or in at a different band. Okay. So. Uh, since like uh, you have multiple channel options in lab chart so you can keep adding those channel and have multiple analysis uh, columns in the data pad so when you have uh, some comparative data probably in one of the other columns you might have some similarity and some differences so that can I mean, help you to decide which parameter or how to how to uh, streamline your studies okay so any any other questions yes suman yeah i have one question yes sir uh, suppose uh, we want to know the mean uh, median uh, median uh, msd that is median spectrum density for uh, mm -hmm. median frequency for this one particular first contraction suppose say okay. we have recorded it for 10 second to analyze fatigue mm -hmm. basically we are doing fatigue analysis and we yeah. have recorded a contraction isometric contraction for 10 second it is known fact that gradually over a period of time that median frequency decreases from say decreases. 0 second to 10 second yeah. how right. we can assess this thing and how we can have a plot for this median um, frequency for uh, no uh, but like for median frequency do you want to assign any band or you want to take yeah. all the we have, the we have assigned particular band after observing the um, uh, Uh, uh frequency distribution in that particular range mm -hmm. okay we'll get definitely that value we can assess say it is between okay. 200 to 400 like that or from 10 to 200 mm -hmm. like that so whatever may be the value it will differ for the muscle because for exactly. small muscle like masseter which is strongest one it may be mm -hmm. having some different frequency as compared to the muscles of lower limb isn't it so mm -hmm. we can have idea for that uh, particular frequency where we need to assess the fatigue so then how shall we proceed uh sir i would uh, i would show you one option as i shown you here take the uh, the numerical value by setting the frequency here median power frequency yes so this is one option where you will get the uh, the value at that selection yeah but since you will be looking at a fatigue study i would uh, suggest you go for the drop down here in one of the channel and go for the spectrum so now you can select say you have your first channel that is your source it is coming with all the frequency component and what you need is your median power frequency and you simply select your band of uh, desired frequency say you want from say 200 to 400 for example so what it does is it will try to give you the median power frequency throughout the recording in this band I mean, you can set the FFT window and the uh, the type of window here. Say okay. You see now the waveform is actually giving you the the median power frequency trend here. Yes. Suppose if you have a fatigue going on, then you can see a steady decline in this particular graph, which is the median power frequency. You can observe over a period. Yes. I mean, this would be much better than you take the value and plot it again here. So you can do that also. You can. Uh, if we if we have such type of graph, can we have a plot for this? Yes, yes. I mean, it, it is simple, uh, simple, sir. Like 
now you see there are two three values for median power frequency from this also you can create a line graph yeah okay. but this will be of a particular selection only and then you are sampling at only three interval of this different different time point whereas this will continuously sample at the uh, the rate which you have set here say this is set for 1k Okay, yes. 50 size now if you want more data points you reduce your uh, samples a 128 it will be more time points here okay yes 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 i mean this makes more sense because you can visualize very clearly whether it is going up or down yeah 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 exactly and this can be set in real time if you have the hardware and while recording you can clearly see whether the fatigue level is i mean onset or uh, i mean how how much long he can uh, perform Yes, yes, yes. Exactly, exactly. So, if you want, then you can further take an average of this. That can be even more beneficial, maybe. How how to calculate average from this thing? Uh, it's it's simple, like any one of the channel. Just set uh, uh, one channel to take the average or maximum, minimum, whatever you want. That will be say ten to thirty-five channel. Just select that ten to thirty-five channel and take the maybe standard deviation or maximum to minimum, whatever you want. Mean. Okay. So this will definitely show you that frequency because it's already calculated the median power frequency, and you are just taking the mean of over a period. Yes. So only only thing is uh, you need to create a settings file depending on what is the most suitable settings for you, so that you will be able to keep on uh, uh, what do you call it, using the same template for the rest of the analysis. Okay. is there any way to automatize this like say we have 100 subjects okay doing each task for each one is like little uh, time taking uh, yeah. is there any way we can uh, you know repeat the same procedure automatically uh, you can do that sir say for example now uh, i'll just show you we have another file for example i'll uh, uh, this is one subjects data for example i will just append another file uh, i can't do that in the the reader but in the lab chat i can open the same file immediately after this so once you have say maybe some 10 subjects or 100 subject data into the same file since you have already added the comments based on these particular actions so what you can do is uh, there is a view called scope view so this will allow me to cut by the comment now you see i am just selecting the the name of the comment here so what it does is it will try to take the data before and after the comment and you can see this many comments are there in the entire file and you can also specify say suppose whether you want to take the comment Uh, name only says start, and you can also specify how much before and how much after you want to monitor. Say suppose if your contraction phase is going for about uh, uh, two seconds or three seconds, uh, you are adding the comment before that. So you can simply set uh, uh, from that point before comment maybe less after comment. Let's monitor for maybe five seconds after the start comment. Okay. Now you see, it is actually taking you the comment is here. Start comment is here. And the next start also has come because the time what I have said is, I mean more. Are you are you able to follow that? Yeah. It is actually creating overlaps of multiple uh, starts. You see, this is a first, this is a second, sorry, uh, second and third, fourth and so on. Since there are some uh, overlapping here. So, if required, you can fine tune this timing. Say maybe two seconds or something. Now you have start and end of all. So, if required, you can have hundred. I mean pages, so that hundred uh, uh, repetitions can be overlaid on the, onto the same. If you don't want, if you want to have individual, you can always cross check. 
so this will allow you to uh, have a fixed timing for whatsoever number of subjects or number of uh, what do you call comments then you can have a page wise uh, data extraction you have an option to say for example there are five pages of uh, maybe uh, five subjects in the in the case then you can simply go for multiple add to data pad there is an option here what we have done last time is just a single point instead we will go for multiple add to data pad so this will allow us to take from pages say like if you have added the data of uh, maybe 100 subjects so it will have maybe 100 200 300 pages so you can take the value from each page suman yeah uh, we can uh, add the comment as a subject 1 subject 2 yes, and exactly, then, exactly. then you can divide the pages into subjects subject 1 exactly. start subject 2 exactly. end yes so, so you, you can get the those many pages you can have that way it will be more convenient or if each subject has a same set of uh, recordings say suppose uh, uh, the start to start is say one subject's data then you can easily say that every uh, uh, subject data will have one start and one end or two starts maybe let me add to data pad so you will get an idea i'm just saying current selection only whatever is shown the contraction base or you can also select the the baseline say add to data pad Uh, sorry, I didn't select the scope pages from the current selection. So since there are about say five pages it detected here in the scope view, so it will add five rows here. Each row is for one row. Uh, I mean one one page. Is, is it what uh, you are looking at, sir? So this is the value of. the first subject average or maximum minimum whatever for that selection so this is for the second subject third fourth and so on. but if there are say multiple repetitions of the same subject then instead of there will be one there will be uh, two three pages because we are doing by start say suppose if there are start one start two start three then there will be three three rows for each subject that way you can uh, uh, automate Automation is not a fully automation because uh, you need to uh, specify what timeline you want to uh, get the analysis. So once you set it for all those pages, it will add the data. So if you want to differentiate, you can also set a column to have the comment number or comment text from any channel. So if you don't know at what uh, uh, I mean, data this. line corresponds to so it will automatically add the comment name or if required you can also add the comment number comment time and comment number so this will help you to segregate which subjects data this one uh, this row corresponds to so you can easily say that this is first subject data second third and so on based on the comment comment number so you can i mean extract the data flexibly using the lab chart but only thing is as i said you need to first specify what exactly you want because uh, when you open the uh, the file it first this will all be set to take the mean of those particular channel so once you configure what exactly you want to extract then it becomes easy any other questions so there are i think couple of questions can we measure the mean duration i think we have done it any any uh, other questions sir hello hello yeah uh, suman there is one question yes, if sir. the raw data lacks any comment like start uh -huh. and end can we put yeah. a comment in the lab chart Yes, yes, you can. You can easily put. Say, for example, uh, uh, while recording, say you could not uh, add a comment, for example. So after recording, you can simply just go to that particular point where you want to add the comment. Say you want to add a comment here, for example. 
So simply right click, say add a comment. Okay. You can uh, just mention the name of the comment, like whatever subject details or uh, the contraction, peak of contraction, whatever you want. And you can put it either to a particular uh, channel or for all the channels. Say peak of contraction. Or uh, uh, maybe if you have finalized this, this was the MVC out of all the five sets. You can simply yes. say that MVC. MVC. I'm just adding to all the channels. And later on, if required, I can move it also. Say, for example, uh, I know that first one was my MVC, correct? Yes. Because we got 100% here. Yeah? I can simply click on that uh, uh, the number on the bottom and it will allow me to move the comment. Okay. Just put it onto the peak of that MVC. So my MVC comment is there on the peak. Fine, fine. So uh, I mean, the the tools are very flexible, sir. You can I mean uh, extract most of the things. But the only thing is, you need to configure what exactly you want to extract from that particular data. So I think we have uh, covered many of the things what we have uh, initially planned of uh, uh, just giving an introduction on the Blanchard Reader. But if you have any, any further questions or any other feature you would like us to show, please uh, feel free to uh, unmute yourself and talk. So Dr. Ganesh uh, is uh, uh, saying like if any, uh, collaborative research, so he's sharing his email ID. So we will just pass on to all of you. So has anyone worked on this before among the attendees? Worked on lab chart? Can you, no. sir, repeat? Uh, oh, sir, yeah. no, sir, sir, sir was asking if anybody has used lab Anyone chart has before. used lab chart before? Yes, sir, we are using lab chart. <laughs> okay. You are from where, sir? Which institute? Sir, uh, I, I, I am from Ames, New Delhi. Okay, okay. Yes. So that's what there are, but the many people uh, who are really new to this, uh, my only uh, this thing to them is that Take this as an experience. No one can learn in the first time. Just get yeah, familiar yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, with yeah, the software. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. I have taken a lot of uh, sessions to learn about this. And only if you got a sensor and work on that and uh, try to do this, it will happen. But we are given the sample files uh, for which the uh, this thing uh, reader is sufficient. Just try to play around with it so that when you get the opportunity to work with the I think EMG, then you'll be ready for it instead of spending another uh, couple of months to learn about it and all. So this is the yes, main sir. objective of the workshop, yeah. Yes, sir, it will be right. And uh, I think uh, one more thing, uh, Suman, I think uh, Suman will be giving me the list of people who have been attending, who actually attended. I think we'll keep in contact with this. Maybe we can form a group, you know, like-minded people who are into EMG and all. Maybe like uh, Dr. Ganesh said, uh, working collaborative, maybe we can share some uh, information as well, because uh, as far as this, uh, uh, what is the baseline is concerned, you know, uh, that is MVIC is concerned, a lot of uh, debate is going on in that. Maybe someone has come to a solution of how he has done, gone about doing it. Maybe they can share uh, with others also, uh, so that we can build yeah, a friend there is, there is of uh, like many people. Yeah. So there is a need of ecosystem uh, or uh, maybe the knowledge uh, uh, sharing. So like uh, using of such kind of tools become easy. easy. In India, like uh, it's pretty new, uh, little new. So people feel uh, face a lot of problem using all these tools. So it's, it's good to have some kind of group or like-minded people together. So who can share the learning, share the knowledge and do the things a little faster. Yeah, maybe if someone has done some actual, I mean, in future also, if anyone is doing some research and has got results and all, 
maybe a separate workshop you can contact suman then we can do a separate workshop only on that you know how we have done and we can ask you questions to learn more about that uh, no just get uh, information regarding uh, how we can do about it you know that, uh, we are we are always available i mean if you have any queries and uh, uh, maybe you can i mean have a collaboration maybe you can make a group or women whoever are working on a similar field yes, so definitely it should help to share the maybe Uh, experience no, and uh, actually our aim is to we have to develop some researches in this area in india also you know we always say uh, foreign people i mean westerners and all i mean even india if we try to discuss this way of course we yeah. can get some experience from outside also i think we have to develop our own uh, what that we have depend on ourselves and develop our own uh, information base so that we can do Definitely. more studies on this thing. many times this consumable are not available in india like many times you have to import so, you yeah, know that, uh, yeah yeah that's the problem and it takes lot of time yeah, that is true uh, but sir like i mean if you have uh, uh, some uh, maybe uh, local sources available so you can also try to customize the 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 style right. sensors locally i mean that that should not be a limitation for uh, what do you call uh, any recording because uh, as uh, i know dr gerald he was actually in a similar position and he uh, he got double sided uh, tapes from amazon and he customized uh, um, the tapes so so, actually the, the tapes are costing around 100 bucks but i got yeah. a double sided tape from amazon for 10 sheets i got for uh, 30 bucks and uh, i took the stencil and the exact measurements i took and uh, cut the holes and all that it's working perfectly actually <coughs> otherwise uh, i was thinking of reducing my you know, experimentation because the stickers were getting uh, emptied and it's okay. not so just the major major uh, major issue for us what happens is uh, even though the cost of the stickers are less the minimum shipping cost itself will remain high so that will actually increase the overall uh, consumable cost so maybe if you are uh, while buying the initial consignment Uh, if you can plan well so that you can buy those number of uh, required sticker at once so that will be at a very uh, reasonable cost or else yeah, as sir said you can try to uh, make something available locally so that which can be effective so uh, yeah, sir many times like electrodes are like you know they if they keep moving the effect your data and uh, you know so a uh, result so you know best practice it is uh, you know how to place electrode or how to fix them because most of these experiment involve moving body parts like if we are we are moving our hands so electrode may be you know getting some mechanical the jerk or uh, movement so it it always this uh, you know uh, affect your signal so uh, maybe some learning in that can be shared or uh, you know these make shift arrangement do not work best uh, using medical tape or uh plasto uh, or all, all these kind of taps yeah you know True. the reason you that to when once we are using this exact tools i get taps so so this i mean uh, double sided tapes works uh, very well sir like as uh, dr gerald has uh, done so that works very smooth only thing is uh, if there is excessive sweat only then it will be a little tricky otherwise it works very well no if there are excesses way to man even yeah. the other stickers become problem so what we do is you have to wrap it round like <laughs> true one only only thing one. is you need to uh, have a kind of a secure like a string or something like a uh, so that it will not fall off but yeah, there is uh, no other uh, <laughs> yeah anyway uh, there is one more question uh, suman can we interface this with any other software like lab view or matlab or anything like that uh yes matlab uh, the data can be streamed from here if you are recording the data okay. uh, the data can be taken to matlab in real time okay if uh, if there is a need but i mean uh, mostly the matlab is used by the what do you call the engineering people where they want to do some prototyping which they are already comfortable but since uh, if you are already using lab chart so most of the analysis you can do within so there is no real need uh, uh, to take the data out but if if required you can always someone already comfortable in the with that yeah if i mean say suppose somebody is already using the the matlab from maybe a long time 
maybe he will be more comfortable in that case it makes sense for them to uh, take the data there uh, there was a, there was another question probably uh, so whether we can uh, have the data recorded at different time so maybe i will just show one uh, example so that uh, if somebody is uh, planning to so for example i have opened one file which is uh, uh, squad demo squad emg now if you want to see you can actually see the time and date here so this is a time uh, sorry the date of the recording 10 10 2020 and you can also see the time and if you want to see the time of the day where the recording has uh, taken place you can right click on the the scale and click on the time mode where you can change it to the time of the day so that you will be able to see on what time of the day it was recorded so once you have this it will be easy for you to differentiate it is of which subjects and which date and time it was recorded Now, if you want to add another file, for example, you can simply go to File and Append. So, uh, just to note that uh, this is possible only in the licensed version of LabChat. It is not possible in the reader. So, just click on the Append. Now, this date, I think, uh, probably uh, both are recorded on the same date, but a different time. I'll just uh, add this data, or maybe if I have some other uh, data, I can also load. Let me see if I have some other data. Simple lab chart. Just try to add some data, which is recorded at a different date and time. Now you see the moment I take the cursor to this first block, it says 10, 10, and the the second one is 22, 8, 2018. This was recorded at that time, and it can be a same uh, what we call data or a different. It will simply load. but if your settings files are made with the same settings so it will simply overlap so you can have the analysis settings for the same so this way you can uh, analyze even the data which is older like maybe 5 year old or even 10 year old you can do a comparison yeah, yeah. it can be a compared yeah it can be compared so so any other questions uh yeah there is a question for a lab view uh lab, lab view will be tricky because lab view is a basically acquisition software which is uh, done by the national instruments cards so if you want to take the data so you need to take the output and connect to your ni card so which you can take it from the delsys or even power lab so or you have to have an option where you can import the the maybe exported data from lab chart i think those are the only two uh, probably lab view might not allow from many other the hardware to stream we are not very sure but uh, only possible option what i can uh, suggest is either uh, connect the analog out in the record through the ni card or export this uh, data from any of this format say you go to export so you will get like variety of formats just check whichever is the compatible format in the lab view and you can uh, import the data into that any other question we missed so i think uh, we have covered uh, most of the things we have planned so if you have any uh, questions any time please feel free to either send us an email or uh, reach us by phone so uh, general sir anything you want to share uh, yeah first yeah i would like to thank uh, mr suman for uh, uh, help helping us and uh, being so clear in uh, throwing view on throwing light on uh, the how the lab chart can be used and uh, Uh, for the people who are not familiar with this uh, at least i hope you have come to understand how the uh, data can be acquired using the sensors and once please remember that the raw data is the most important because once you have the raw data you can always uh, play around with it then you can learn about other things you know even we haven't learned everything at one time rms then uh, uh, 
doing the what different percentages or even the uh, this thing what is that the to, uh, to integral and all those things and even some things which i didn't know i learned about it now only about the date and all about the appending and all that so i think it's always a continuous process but uh, first try to remember the how you can procure the data how we can acquire the data and uh, that was our objective and just give a brief introduction of how it can be analyzed one more thing is that i don't know if someone said but uh, the, from the you uh, see from the chart from the data pad you can always uh, copy paste it into excel also because if you are comfortable with doing all the formulas in excel once you uh, got once you acquired whatever you wanted to acquire, derive the data you have got into the data pad you can always copy the whole thing whole set into the uh, excel and you can uh, do all the calculations there also uh, so yeah. uh, with this uh, few things uh, i thank all the participants for uh, participating because this was actually a very intensive and very practical session so i think uh, this many people are more than sufficient for us because um, i think in the end whoever would want to more learn more about this will remain in the group and i thank all the <laughs> participants for their active participation and i thank uh, mr sumanth and his team at uh, aid instruments for giving the opportunity and as well as providing the uh, zoom platform uh, Uh, for this uh, workshop and i once again i thank you all uh, i like to remind you that uh, within this week i will I'll be sending you the certificate uh, don't worry about it but uh, certificate will always be there but learning is uh, more important and uh, let's always uh, um, i mean uh, i'll be sharing you the uh, emails of other people also so let's keep in touch and let's share whatever information we have among among us and let's uh, improve this uh, what is that Uh, research in this area in in india okay with this words i thank yeah. you once again thank, thank you thank you, thank you uh, sir because uh, uh, i mean we are ready to i mean support but like we also need some tough questions so that uh, we can answer as well as we can also improve on so i, I thank you uh, uh, gerald sir because uh, this was your uh, what do you call the idea of giving them a kind of a hands on training online so i hope many people have found it useful but maybe for some people so, i mean who have not used the laptop before maybe it was too deep but like since we have uh, i mean I've given you the access of laptop reader and a sample file please play around whenever uh, you have time and uh, feel free to reach us if you have any questions we'll be sharing the video also no Let's yeah video is already there in uh, i mean youtube we can share the link to you so you can always yeah, have a look uh, if you need to Yeah, we'll share the link also. Okay. Yeah. Thank you once again. And Thank you once again for all the participants for your active uh, uh, engagement and uh, the the question and answer sessions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.